The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, everyone, so much for spending time with us tonight and allowing us to be a voice along your path. This is where connections, questions become connections, and we all have a chance to make our industry a better place. My name is Beth Hathoot, and this is Notary Star's General Mentorship. Today is Monday, September 25th, 2023, and here's my PSA. Please remember, if you're driving, that this meeting is being recorded, and we would prefer, if you're watching live while you're driving, that you remain off camera and keep your eyes on the road. We care about your well-being, and you can always come back to our replays on YouTube anytime you wish. And if you subscribe to our channel, you'll get notified when we post fresh new content, like the replay of this session. Mm -hmm. And I'll be posting a link, or Ronnie can post a link to our YouTube in the chat, so you can subscribe today uh, if you'd like. This weekly mentorship is held every Monday at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it is all about you guys, the nationwide notary community. So we hope that you'll turn your cameras on because, hey, it's a lot easier to talk to a real live person than rather than those little tile plackets. Turn your cameras on. Bring a question to ask or share something that you know with your colleagues here today. All you have to do is virtually raise your hand by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And don't be timid or shy because this is your time and we want to hear from you. Mr. Ronnie, as you can tell, is back from vacation and is joining us tonight. <laughs> but our Ron instructor, Mr. Bill, is on vacation this week. It looks like we're kind of taking turns here. <laughs> but... He'll be back next week. Now we have several jot form questions to address tonight and thank you for your submissions. Um, if it turns out we run out of time and don't have a chance to get to your questions, rest assured we'll turn around and answer them by email so they aren't let you aren't left just wondering what the answer might be. We've got a few that are left over from last week that we didn't get to, so we'll try to address those first. So, Mr. Ronnie, if you are ready, let's get this party started. Absolutely. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here. I mean, this is the best top of the hour I've seen in a while. It's got 110 people on it. You probably are here because you're like, what is this big announcement that Ronnie has to make? <laughs> um, aside from the fact that next general mentorship, we're giving away $1,000. So you probably want to tune in and watch that happen. Um, especially if you participated in a contest. Uh, we're giving away $1,000 next week. Uh, but I have some big news. Uh, first things first, I want to uh, put in the chat. I put it in just a few minutes ago, but I'm going to put this in there. You might notice in the background of other people, there are these little stars, uh, which are notary stars. And we would love to see these. I, I see people that I didn't even know have them. I see Kelly has got one there from Pennsylvania. Um, these are the little notary stars that we have decided to just make this company be like, what happened? Um, it's not ours. We don't get anything from it. I put it in uh, the chat. But if you would like to shine your notary star in any meeting you're in, whether it's on notary stars or not, uh, I see people reaching for them in the background, turning them on. Yeah, there we go. We want to let see you shine your light bright because here at Notary Stars, we're all about signing agent excellence. Okay. It's all about being the best notary that you can be. Um, if, if I have a lot of energy, guys, I'm sorry. I just got back from vacation. So if you've always thought I've had energy, you, you, I got a seven-day relaxation. So I'm like raring to go. 
But um, I put that into the chat. I want to remind you here, Ms. Beth already said it, but please turn on your cameras. We are moving into the digital age where we are all going to have to be on camera. At least on Zoom, you can do a filter. I did three Ron signings today. <laughs> no filter because the Ron platforms don't have them on there. Um, I always tell you guys, you get me very filtered. I've got Zoom filter all the way up. Adjust for lighting. I, if you met me in real life, you might be like, is that Ronnie? Um, because you know, here I feel safe with my zoom filter. So go ahead and turn on those cameras and, and let's light it up tonight so that we can get started. Now I am so excited because we found kind of a glitch in signing order. And this is something that I've been chasing for like a year, but just figured it out today. And there's no one else out there that knows this. And it's so simple. So I've always had my signing order profile for Ronnie at Unlimited Ink where I can toggle back and forth. I've actually never done a signing on signing order at all because I've always owned the company when we switched over. But I created this profile uh, to do the Ron signings. And this is what everybody's here for, I'm sure. I hope you'll stick around because we got a lot of great questions tonight. But I created a profile and I started noticing, uh, it started with Miss uh, Susan Burgo, who I don't think is here tonight. Let me just type her name in. No, uh, but she's one of our, our greats. We have uh, uh, Deshay, who is here tonight. I called him and said, you definitely want to be here because it happened with his profile as well. And I started doing a test, like, why is this happening? And I noticed that my new profile for signing order was not showing up when I was filtering for unlimited ink signings. And there's a filter on signing order that says NNA certified. And what happened was, is that I created a brand new profile on signing order and it doesn't match the email address that is on my signingagent.com profile. Okay. So all these sites that are asking you to put in your NNA link to verify your, and this is huge because I went through and it was like 25% of the notaries that we use are not showing up and are not getting notified for the signings. I see people shaking their head, writing this down. I love that. Um, when you sign up for the NNA, you usually sign up when you're a brand new notary. A lot of you use your personal email address when you sign up for NNA. And then you go in and you have to like set up your signingagent.com profile. If you change your email address and you are using it on signing orders, Zig Sig, all these other things, you are not going to come up in the searches um, for, uh, for things um, on signing order. So that's the big kicker for tonight. I wanted to do it right at the top of the hour. You know, now we got 120 people on. I'm sure there will be people because we're only 90 minutes in, tune in. But that's the big kicker for tonight. And, and you know, before we go any further, I want to know, does anybody have a question about that at all? You can virtually raise your hand. You got to actually click the little button to raise your hand. I'll be happy to answer that. But I have to tell you, this is a this is a big fine because I have notaries all the time that say, why am I get, not getting signings? And I go to try to find them and then I can't find them. And it's that NNA filter. And I'm like, oh, you got to update your profile. And sorry, guys, I'm a human being, too. I don't own signing order. I use it as a platform. And then I found out this is the thing. Um, Anita, you got your hand raised there? Yes. How are you doing tonight? Good. How are you? Great. Um, I wanted to sign up for signing orders tonight. Mm -hmm. And when I clicked on the link, it had me go to notary summary. I mean, notary resume. Yes. So could you... So once you do notary resume, does that automatically put you into signing orders? Yes. Or do you have to create so, a prompt? Notary resume is kind of like their public site. Okay. And, and it puts you into signing order. It'll have you create a username and all of those things. Notary resume is a part of signing order. It's their kind of like their starting home base uh, to get inside of there. But since you're brand new, you will want to use the same email address that you're using for signingagent.com. I wish I would have known this earlier because I just completed that and I put in my Gmail uh, email instead of my Yahoo. So I need to go back and change it to my Yahoo. Well, listen, you're not behind. Or you can okay. go to your signingagent.com. 
Here's the kicker for everybody. First of all, don't start writing signing order tonight because they'll hate me for this. Okay. Um, they don't know I'm having this big PSA. Okay. I just found it out. Um, I have a good direct line with them because we put a lot of good business through them. If you update your email address on signingagent.com to match your signing order or signing order to match, it's still going to take nine to 10 days for it to crawl um, because it's done through a sync. And it can take, it, it, you guys have to realize there's so many notaries out there that it takes forever to go through every profile. So you just signing up tonight, you might be good. I would just say, make sure both of those match. But for everybody else that's been out there for a while, it's going to take nine to 10 days once you make the the marrying of the two to make them right. And they told me check back in seven to 10 days and I'll be checking on mine and I'll report back on this, of course. So can I just go back into a notary resume and just change my email and that would uh, update my profile? Yes, that, that would be what I would do. So the same thing, Ronnie, let me make sure I understand what you're saying here. The same thing would be true. Let's say you're a new notary and you've got a Yahoo or a Gmail account, and that's what you used to do your NNA certification and to go into notary resume, blah, blah, blah. So now later down the road, you decide to buy a domain name and get a real professional email like Beth at Notary Stars instead of Beth at Gmail. And you go through and you're signing up everybody else that you're with your domain email. You are actually diverting your certification with NNA that these companies are looking for because now the two emails don't match. Now, this is specific to signing order, which is 50% of the business out there, okay? Um, Snapbox may have its own way. Notary Stars actually tells you when you sign up, list your name as it's listed on your commission because that's how we look for you and send you out. When you're signing up for everything, this is just case in point. That when you're signing up for things, you need to like do it verbatim. And I get it. A lot of us come into this industry off of advertisement, you know, make more money, blah, blah, blah. And then you get here. And then this is like a little nuance that I mean, I'm what, 13, almost 14 years in and just found this out today. And I actually, the notary that this happened with, and I wish she was here tonight, she comes here and does our checks. She's like hired to come and do our checks. She brings the checks to my house, comes in this office, scans them here, like goes and deposits them at the bank. There's no reason for me to miss signs with her. And I've even pulled it up. I'm like, I don't know. You're like, you need to get your NNA. And then it was happening to me because with all these Ron signings, we wanted to have a another profile for me in case I needed to jump in as a manager and do them. We wanted to like uh, have a, like a secondary profile for me or Travis. And we created them and we're like, we, well, we did everything right. Why is it not coming up? It was because the email address didn't match the NNA profile. Interesting. Um, we're going to answer these questions on the screen really quick. And I know we're 15 minutes in. So if this is related, let, let's do it this way. If you are related to this question, leave your hand up. If you, you got another question, put it down and we'll come right back to it. Um, Miss Nancy, you got your, you got the floor now. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, you know, I probably should have said something about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and maybe this is something that everybody should look at. So on Snap Docs, you know, when you fill out all that paper, mm -hmm. it said I was unverified. And I'm like, how can I not be verified? Because I had a fun email address after I got my commission. And um, they actually called me and said, your email across the board has to match. And so I went through each one of them and changed. Now, what I noticed is a problem last week between signing order and Ben Books, which I absolutely love Ben Books. Um, none of my orders that I had were feeding into Ben Books. And so I was talking to the gentleman there and he said that signing order right now was having some huge glitches. They weren't sure what was going on. And this was like last Wednesday, Thursday. He said, just tons of stuff going on. Just be patient. It was going to take a day or two for them to sort it out. But I agree 100%. I got the fun email and that's where 
I actually got phone calls from signing companies saying you've got to use the same email because we can't verify. The problem is they can't verify who you are with your email is what I was told. Yeah, and you guys, if you've never looked at something like this, um, thank you for that, Miss Nancy. If you've never looked into something, just go out and look at something called Zapier. A lot of big companies, I'm gonna tell you something. You you think signing companies like Signing Order, Snapdocs, um, Unlimited Inc., million dollar companies, right? Multi-million dollar companies. They use programs like Zapier that just match data so that they don't have to pay an employee to match that data. But then the thing is, is that we don't have the infrastructure also to email it out or the know-how. We just assume everybody's gonna have that data match, right? So we wanna keep one consistent, but this is a huge find in the notary industry. I have to tell you, like knowing that you could be discounted by a letter off, um, notary stars, we're very adamant about it. When you, when you sign up, it says, list your name exactly as you're listed on your commission because we have a program that matches it back to signing order so that we can find you so that we can put it into the profile that you've taken the training. And we we constantly go back and I'm sure some of you on the call have had it where we email you and say, your, hey, your profile's not right. Something's not right. Um, if you've ever received that email, you have to respond to those. But a lot of the companies that are not thinking for thinking they don't think about us as a pool of notaries, right? Like they're not thinking about like us trying to pay our rent. They're just trying to do their job. So this was a big find today. Uh, Ms. Susan, you are up next with your question. Okay, hi, Ronnie, welcome back. Hi, thanks. Um, um, so with the signing, the notary resume and signing order, should we sign on, sign up on both of them? Or if we're signed up on one, we're signed up on the other. You're signed up on both. Uh, notary resume is the starting point for signing order. So that's where you go in and you put in your information and get started with your signing order profile. Most of you will never go back to uh, notary resume again, to be honest. I mean, it, it does work as, you know, if you allow it to go out into the Google search engines, it'll go out and create a little page for you. But most of you are never going to return to there. You're going to operate inside signing order once you start with notary resume. Because they look pretty much identical. They they, they really are because they're <laughs> the same company. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you. And then Ms. Sophia. Hey, Ronnie. Um, the question I have is when I started, of course, I used my personal email and then I got my own email, but I wind up going back into NNA, editing it and putting in my notary email and I haven't had a problem but one thing that I did have happen to me and I think it was in June and July um somehow my commission just disappeared off a of signing order and it was just so happened that um I had spoken with April and she's like Sophia your commission is missing I'm like huh so um I was able to go up and re-upload it and I had a girlfriend today who just called me and said she looked at signing order and seen that her commission was missing. So um, that's the way I fix it. I still sign in with my personal email, but you guys find me through through signing order because I have my other email there. Well, we find you at Unlimited Inc. and Notary Stars because we actually have you favorited. When you are a Notary Star member, we have you on our list. So every time you sign up or downgrade, we add you or remove, but okay. it is about all companies because every company has their own list. And so you okay. have to kind of account for that as well. Um, so we find you, because you say you guys, I want to make sure this is clear when it's under my roof, I go up and seek you guys out, right. uh, you know, and then, uh, but this is about all companies. This is going to affect you no matter who you're working with. Is it, if you don't have that, um, that matching email address. Okay, so the email address that's in the NNA, when I look on my uh, signing profile, it has my notary email address. And that's the email address I use for everything. But when I first started and paid for it, I um, it, had, it had my personal email address. So how do you get them to change it from you logging in under your personal address? So you have to go to signingagent.com and then just 
search for yourself and see what email address is listed there. So I I'm just going to share my screen here uh, as well. So this is my signingagent.com profile. A um, quick question is your contact email address, can it be different from your login email address? That I don't know, but I mean, when you go in and, and you go to the National Notary Association and you're on this page, that email address right there has to match what's in signing order. And that's the correct one. That's the email address that matches where it says my contact information. Mm -hmm. That is the one that has my uh, correct one. Okay. That's what needs to match inside your signing order profile. Okay. If it doesn't match, you're not going to get found. Okay. So. And I'll show you why. Let's see if I can do this without sharing any information. So I think what he's saying is your login information can be different from your contact information on your profile. Two yes. separate, two separate things. Okay, so so yeah, my contact information is correct. My um, login information is a different email, but it's uh, I'm I'm thinking that it's okay. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to do a quick screen share here to show you what I'm talking about. So everybody who hires anybody on signing order is going to want an NNA certified notary. Now, there's additional filters down here. So you can see Bo McDonald comes up here. He's one of our blue notaries. He's done thousands of signings for us. Um, so when I remove NNA certified, you can see that that profile there, Arizona Notary Star, which is the one that I created here on uh, uh, signing order, does it, it did not match. I used to have Ronnie at Unlimited Ink Notary there. Um, and I was like, why is it not showing up? Now it'll come back. Susan Burgo was one affected and Deshay, who I said come in today, uh, is also one of the, the people being affected. And I, I wrote signing order and I said, hey, why is this happening? Why are these notaries not coming up? And they said, the profile link that you put in for the NNA, that email address has to match. And then they also let me know it would take nine, seven to nine business days once you change it for it to make an effect. So that's why we're like, oh, this is big news because we want to make sure that nobody misses that. And that that's huge because I didn't know about it before. Outside, you guys already would have heard about it. Ms. Sophia, are you all good on your question? Okay. Um, and then Ms. Carol, you are up next, and then we're going to move into questions that we have. Hi, welcome back. Uh, and the question, my, no, my question, and this is really just John, I mean, the great right, some class after I have my first initial and last name, but I go as Carol Cavanaugh, and I hope that's how I'm known and so do again when my commission is going to be my 20 should I just change it to Carol because I okay so that's how I'm known and I end up like looking for something and then I realize oh it's under C so would that mess me up I well however you've been doing it is probably the way you want to stay with it because you got to realize how many places you have to update after you change it true Change so it. is it better to press on or is it better to change it? That's going to be a personal question. Um, I would say, especially as long as you've been a notary, probably leaving it the same is going to be your best bet. I'll just change my name to see. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right, Miss Beth, uh, I think we're ready for some of those job form questions. Okay, I'm going to start with the oldest ones first, Mr. Ronnie, if you don't mind. I don't mind. This is from Michaela Mills, and this came in, this was for last Monday's. She's a new signing agent, <laughs> and it's kind of a broad question. So she wants to know what are the best tools to get started efficiently and affordably? Notarystars.com. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Seriously, like we have everything that you need under the roof. Um, when it comes to tools, we have a resource library of the tools that I trust, that Beth trusts, that Travis trusts, that we all have. I mean, the printer that we have is right there behind Beth's face. The the don't laugh at my desk. It really looks like that. But that scanner that we say is sitting right over there in the corner. 
we don't put anything on the website that we wouldn't buy or use ourselves. Um, so you want to go through all of the free resources to get started. But when it comes to training, we are the most affordable, the most powerful punch that you can give. It's not a sales pitch. It's actually true. Um, by the way, I see someone on the screen and I have to say something. Marshall Wise, I see you looking over here. Um, I called you today. You didn't pick up the phone. I tried to assign you assigning myself. You got to pick up that phone when we call. I'm I'm calling you out. You can you can unmute there if you want to, but I just want to let you know. I tried to personally give you a signing today. <laughs> okay, good. But you didn't call me back. I waited 10 whole minutes. Were you a say a 786 number? Six uh like code? it's either 480 or 602. I have two numbers. <laughs> now he's gonna go sorry. Away. Uh it's okay. Uh, but I, I did try right. to assign you a signing today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get you on the next one. I'm sure you guys have all heard that saying before. I'll get you on the next one. Um, Miss Beth, what's the next question that's up there? Um, we have Donisha Knight. Um, hello, my name is Donisha. I am a member of Notary Stars, but I'd like to get certified in loan signings. What certifications do you offer to be a loan signing agent? Okay, this is a really great, great question. So Notary Stars is not a certification course. And actually, there is no certification course. I know that a lot of people have bought certifications, but that's bogus. It's just what they call themselves. Notary Pro, Loan Signing System, there's no official or anything out there. Notary Stars is a continuing education program. We start you from the very beginning on how to sign loan documents properly, and we continue that education because it changes. A lot of the courses that are out there are outdated, and they don't keep up their stuff, but Miss Beth works her butt off, uh, keeping our, our course up to date with, you know, documents from, like, literally this year. Uh, she's constantly refilming. You might go back two or three mentorships where she talks about, we just refilmed this. We keep it fresh. There's absolutely no actual certification out there. No matter what you get, it's bogus. They're just selling you something. I'm not trying to sell you a certification here. I'm trying to keep you up to date. I'm trying to keep you current. Um, so there are no certifications. You have to have the NNA uh, certification but that's an ethical test. I know it's called a certified signing agent test. What happened is the NNA came along right when this all started. And they were the they were the first, Ronnie and Mark and Carol and Bill Soroka and all of them. They got it first. And so now every underwriter in the country says you have to have a National Notary Association uh, certification exam. But it's actually just BS. And you can clip this and send this to them and... And I, and I would love to have a conversation with about them. I would love for them to come in front of 155 notaries like we have here right now and then talk about how that certification prepares you guys to sign loans because they don't talk about all the loan products that are out there, okay? Nor do most training courses out there. So to become a good loan signing agent, I would say come to Notary Stars. And yep, I'm wearing my 100% Notary Star t-shirt tonight. I'm feeling it. I'm just back from vacation. I'm revamped. Um, I'm sorry if you guys spend money on certifications to become a certified signing agent, but it's all bogus. Really, notaries are handed a handbook and saying, don't kill anybody. <laughs> don't bury the body without, you know, without a shovel or something. I mean, it's just so bad how much is expected of us. And then we're given no direction. And that's why I did start Notary Stars, because I want to make sure that when you're wearing those two hats of notary and loan signing agent, that you're not blurring the lines and getting in trouble for doing so. Ms. Okay. Beth, before we start going any further, do you think we should take some hands that are up on the screen? Yeah, but let me interject one quick thing here. Um, mm -hmm. Andrea in the chat was, was saying, you're talking about no certifications other than NNA is pretty much required, but it doesn't teach you how to be a signing agent, right? Correct. So, that's interesting because several platforms ask if you're certified by XYZ and they list notary stars as an option. Yes. So, 
signing services and or title companies can all have a preference um, for what type of training they'd like to see the notaries they work with to have. And it's good to know that Notary Stars has those options out there. <clears throat> so we always tell you, load up your resume, take all of the training that you can, because you don't know what someone's going to prefer, but it's not a requirement. And you also don't know when someone's running at an MLM and that their graduates go off and start signing agencies and you have to take that course and pay them money as an affiliate link. So it works both ways. Uh, Notary Stars does not operate that way, but some places do. Um, but thank you for bringing that up, Ms. Beth, because that kind of another great point out of my mouth there that I would have hated yeah. to do. So Beth Green is probably, her arm's probably getting tired from holding it up there. So Beth, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Okay, thank you so much. Quick question. I had one signing agency or signing service tell me that 4506 T's were getting rejected if the signature wasn't completely within the box. Have you guys heard anything about that? I have never heard anything about that. And in fact, um, that would be a US government question, not a title question nor a lender question. Yeah. Um, that is a preference from a signing service or a title company. When you got this order, was it directly from title? Was it a signing service or was it? It was in the signing services instructions. And it specifically said like, you know, they even had a little picture of it. And it said that they had gotten some rejected for the signature not being completely within the box. I will tell you, I've had signers that have had really large signatures that have never been rejected. But if this is a an instruction from a signing service, because you guys have ever worked with Unlimited Ink, you guys know we have instructions out the wazoo. Um, instructions are instructions. That means that they created that for their specific client. And it could be that that lender's underwriter requires that. And so we can never equate to, we, I never want to teach you guys to go, oh, well, they never said this before. It could be that specific client. And we are all business owners servicing many clients. So it could be that specific client. So we what, what do we do as notary stars striving for signing agent excellence? We give each client what they want. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I just wanted to see if anyone else had seen it. No. Uh, if anybody else has, please raise your hand and uh, let us know. Uh, but I've never seen it before, but I wouldn't not do it because... You know, absolutely it takes one bad review. Absolutely. So the Susan Rotham in chat says she's a former IRS employee and said it's a computer reader issue. Okay. So it has to be in the box to be able for their system to read it. Perfect. All right. Uh let's kind of start toggling between hands raised and questions. Um, Ms. Beth, what's the next question that was written in? Um, this is from Jennifer Barbie, and she also is not here tonight, but this was from last week. She, wanted to, she said it might be a silly question. First of all, there is never silly questions. Never a silly or silly. Only the ones that are not asked. <clears throat> exactly. However, it's caused me to pull back on taking new appointments. Is it very common for LSAs or notary publics to get sued? After I became licensed, I learned of this and it caused me to hesitate to apply for new signings. Okay, so I think you guys can trust me, right? Like I've been running a signing agency for a better part of six years now, been a notary for 13 years now. Miss Beth's been a notary for 20 years now. Miss Beth, have you ever wound up in a courtroom over being a notary? Have I ever gone to a courtroom being, uh, yes. Yes. I have. <clears throat> okay. That's one instance on this call right now out of 157 people. Does anybody else want to be in a courtroom? The answer is yes. You can get sued, you can get questioned, you can be put on hold. I have a notary that was almost sued in the state of uh, Washington for no fault of her own. 
She was actually one of the first notaries to have a notary journal and do things the notary star way. Um, and if, if she hadn't done that, she actually probably would be in jail. I worked very closely with the detective on this particular order because it was under the Unlimited Ink roof. Um, I did have to take her out of the field, but she wound up, you know, going through the rigmarole. Yes, things can happen, but they can happen on general notary work way more than being a signing agent. These two instances were on being signing agents. Uh, Ms. Beth, was yours uh, regarding a loan or is it general notary work? Um, it, well, it was forgery, number one. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't a not notarial error. Um, and I guess it would have been considered uh, general notary work, but I've also been in court twice as a um, witness, a professional witness uh, on cases. So there's lots of different reasons that you might be called into court for sure, not just notarial errors. I've never been called in court, but I've, uh, I have had, you know, and by the way, I just went on vacation. So this is a good reminder. I have my office under lock and key like I'm supposed to do. I have my notary journals that I haven't turned in yet in their uh, lock and key in another safe. The person who stays and they're changeable. Um, I always leave people in my home saying, you know, you they don't get access to my office unless I phone you and they have a, a warrant. <laughs> um, things can happen in this career, but you can't let that make you afraid of being a loan signing agent. You can't let that make you be afraid of being a notary. In fact, in the times that it's come to me where things go into question, I think, great, this is my opportunity to show how good I did my job. You can't live in fear of someone showing up at your house with a warrant saying, I need to see your journal. That's actually their job. And if you do your job right, which is what we teach at Notary Star, signing agent excellence, so that you don't have a problem I would say I'd love for the police to line up outside my door and say, can I see this journal entry? Can I see this journal entry? Can you come down to the court? Because I know I'm going to do it right. And you guys, especially if you're here or you're a part of this meeting, you're going to do it right too. We know that because that's what we teach here. And so you can't live in fear of being a, uh, of getting sued or something. Because if you do your job right, nothing's going to happen. In fact, you're going to show everybody else how to do their job. So don't don't be afraid of getting sued. Miss Beth, would you agree on that? Absolutely. Listen, you just know your job, know your state regulations, do your job precisely to a T, including giving the oath, guys. There's too many people out there who don't give an oath at the time of the signing. They do it at the beginning of the signing. Not good. Just do your job precisely the way it's laid out for you. Um, and you shouldn't have any problems, literally. Awesome. Um, let's go on to Michelle Robbins. I want to start toggling back and forth because I, I know we have uh, still more questions. But Mr. Michelle, when you're ready, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. Um, do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I um I was a little late to the meeting, and I um while you were talking about the different emails, I checked mine, and they were both different. My the one I have in NNA, and the one I have in signing order. Um, so I wanted to clarify what. So I'm going to change it to be the same, but um, does it matter which one I change it to? Like, um, no, keep... no, okay. it doesn't matter which one as long as they both match. Okay. And you want to make sure it matches on all platforms because we only discovered this with signing order. This is possible that it's happening with SnapDocs and ZigSig. You know, I'll have to reach out to Adam from ZigSig to see if he does something similar. I don't uh, think SnapDocs is going to entertain the conversation at all uh, because they're not as notary friendly as, you know, these other platforms. But you, you, it doesn't matter which one you change it on, but you do want to have a uniform email address and name on all your profiles. So what was happening? They weren't, you're not being found? Is that, I? Yeah, I showed it earlier on the screen and I'm always a little sensitive about showing things on signing order. The people that I did show were present 
Um, that's a small sample size, but that's an actual real what's happening. When you mm -hmm. click the button, I need an NNA certified notary. What's happening is when you put that link in your signing order profile, if it doesn't match the email address, it's not going to show you anyway. So you're you're getting filtered out. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am going to jump the, the line for Deshay here, um, only because he was one of the ones that I showed on the screen. And uh, I just want to make sure he doesn't have anything to say. Deshay, go ahead and ask your question there. Hey, Ronnie. Um, thanks for giving me a call. Um, the reason my question is, um, so when we spoke earlier, initially I thought I was using my personal email when I first signed up. Mm -hmm. and, um, I checked both websites. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, I do have a very, very long name. Um, so I'm wondering if the preferred name that is on the signing agent website versus my actual name, like, is that kind of causing a conflict? Because from it what I see, it has to be identical. Has to be identical. Okay. Yeah. So, and I would say whatever you have on your commission needs to match what's on those websites. Okay. 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 All right. And, you know, long name or not, you got to put it in there. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Beth, uh, the next question out of the out of the the chats or the. I'm going to. I've got a couple of Ron ones. I'm going to skip those for just a minute. I'm going to go to some of the earlier ones from this weekend. Um, this first one, Ronnie, I think I can answer. This is from Tara Thorpe. Um, she writes in and she wants to know a little bit more about qualia and how to get on with them. So Qualia is another distribution platform. They work directly with title. Um, very few signing services, if any, I've never seen a signing service on Qualia, um, but it's a platform. It's a distribution software. Um, you can sign up with Qualia. I don't know how much they might be doing in your, your area. They're what would you say, Ronnie, five, six years old now? They're about five or six years old, but I will tell you that, um, so you're going to hear different things from different people. So let's let's just backtrack for just a second. You said you've never seen a signing service on there, but Unlimited Inc. gets tons of business off of Qualia. Okay. They actually, they actually gravitate more towards signing services on Qualia, in my opinion. Um, it, Interesting. But here's the thing. Qualia charges 25% of whatever you post your fees as. So if you take a signing, they pay for it up front. And let's say you post 100, you're only going to get 75. They take $25 up front. Like that's it, flat fee to the title company. So if you post 100 and they hire you, you're only getting 75. Unlimited Inc. has really high rates on there just so they compensate for that. But we get a lot of business out of Qualia. Individual notaries can sign up for Qualia, but it's going to be hit and miss because what happened is, is a lot of the companies out there have gravitated towards signing agencies. They call it the Qualia marketplace. And they're going to go with more bigger companies because what they're doing is they're partnering with someone that can do all their orders. Now, you may be a lucky notary, though that has one company that only does your area. They may not need a national service. They may just be like, you know what? Our company said we're going to use Qualia. That's what we got to use. And you may get all of it from them. So I would say sign up with them. However, you may not be very lucrative at it. And I would tell you, be very careful with it because it's automatic signings. Like it just comes to you. And that is one thing that can get you in trouble is having a booking feature when you're not ready to take that signing. So you just go to Qualia, sign up in the marketplace as a notary. Uh, but if you don't hear anything, don't expect customer support because they have the worst customer support for notaries and signing services. They're just going to say, it's up to you. Um, they're not they're not built for an infrastructure. They're they're they only care about numbers. Does that help uh with with that? Um she's not present today, so I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Miss Beth, I know we're gonna be running out of time soon. 
Um, I want to go ahead and start this one. If you can start the one that we just did, I'm going to start the one about Yelp, which came in from Eva Marie Hale. Uh, I know she's here tonight. And Miss Eva, I am putting into the chat, and I want everyone here to please go down the chat. I'll post this on the replay as well. I wrote a blog article about Yelp. Her question is, I have a rep, uh, a rep from Yelp calling me about signing up with them to get more business. It's $450 a month. What do you think? No, you need to have a Yelp listing, but you do not need to pay them a thing. I wrote an entire article, which I just posted in the chat, and I made a video on how to set up your Yelp listing and how to handle those calls. Do not pay Yelp $1, okay? I put it in my blog article, and, and here's a simple answer. Yelp advertises free notary services on Google search. You're paying $13 to $23 per click. The customer goes to your listing and clicks on it, and they're expecting free notary services, and then you charge them, and then they don't book. Until they fix this, and a couple of other things that I put in the article, none of us should ever pay Yelp a dollar and share it with a friend. Share that article with as many people as you can. Do not let them get one red cent from this industry, and I put it down in plain English why you should not pay for them. If you think you're making money off of Yelp ads right now, Come talk to me because I can tell you how you're not. Because they're charging $13 to $23 a click and running your ads 24 hours a day alongside attorneys. And then you're making one signing. But how much did you pay for that one signing? It is awful. And, and they're the billion-dollar bully. There's a whole movie about it. But I will tell you, they are really wrong for our industry. So please click on that link and um, and read that article and watch the video. You should have a listing there, but you sh that's it. That's it. Don't pay them a thing. And give them my phone number. Tell them to call me. I'll tell them why. They hate calling me. <laughs> yeah, they are pretty persistent when they cabbage on to us and want us to sign up for advertising, for sure. You want another job for a question, or should we let Jerisha? Let's go with Jerisha uh, right now, and then we'll we'll get to another question on the, the, the chat. Okay. Hey, um, so uh, just pick, I guess following on what you stated earlier about being a certified loan um, agent. And um, I think people get confused of, because depending on your state, you need a TIPIC license. Mm -hmm. So they think you just take the, you know, the mark, whatever, mark loan sign, and that's it. So you have to like, you have to like basically go to your state website to make sure you have everything uh, to become a certified um, loan sign agent. And you have to do like the prere prerequisite classes stated by your state. Because I know Maryland has to do that in order to be an authorized loan signing agent. Yes. And, you know, I feel very, I, I actually know a few loan signing agents from Maryland. And I feel very bad that you guys have to go through all of that training and then you're still a signing agent, like where you can't cross the line as a signing agent. Um, but yes, you're absolutely correct. And on Notary Stars, we actually have a whole check sheet uh, for each state for you, before you be start in Notary Stars. Now, even if you check that, and I keep sending you the unmute because I would love to conversate with you while we're doing this. Um, the This is no different than an attorney-only closing state. You're still going to operate as a signing agent. And so Notary Stars, we teach you what you can and cannot say, you know, at the table, what you can and cannot go over. Um, even if you have a title producer's license, when you are operating as a signing agent, there's that fine line that you can't cross okay. you know, or get up to the line. Or for those who are in an attorney-only closing state, there's a fine line that you can walk up against, but you can't cross. And so we, we're very conscientious of that, but you are right. In every state, there are certain things that you have to do in order to become a, even a signing agent in, in those, right. those states. And you only need it for like one document. It's not the entire document because I got my own typical license, but yes, that's it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Listen, food for thought comes from all different angles. And if I could just spew out and Beth could just spew out everything that we all need to think then great we would only have to have one session once a year maybe but <laughs> the meeting of the minds is what this is all about here um miss beth i want to actually pin one on you um 
there's a, a couple of questions in here that are about things that, you know, really up your alley. Uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. So this one came from Laura and she's actually got three questions. The first one is if the seller package has both a closing disclosure and settlement statement, which one should be presented first? Well, as we know, seller packages don't always have a closing disclosure because remember, closing disclosures are created by the lender. And when you're doing the seller side of a transaction, you're 50-50 chance that the buyer's lender is going to require that the seller sign a closing disclosure. So, A, if it's a seller package and you have a closing disclosure, you can start with that. We always want you to start with the closing disclosure because that's the consumer document. The settlement statement is the industry or the title company document, but that closing disclosure is actually created for the consumer. It's meant to be very easily read and understood. And so for that reason, I'm gonna say, start with the closing disclosure always if one's in your package. Okay, that really answers question number two as well. And then the second question is, it says, uh, most instructions tell us uh, we should circle the proper identification on or yeah, of he, she, his, hers, and him, her. So don't want, uh, do we do the same for I and we? Okay. Um, I, we, and the other pronouns are reader assist language that you will find in every public document, particularly government documents. And I'm here to tell you, reader assist means when the reader is reading that sentence or that paragraph, they are choosing the proper word to make it make sense. It was never meant to be something that we circle or strike through. So if you're talking about your notarial certificate, um, where some, I don't know, does unlimited ink require pronouns to be circled in a certificate? No, we actually shy away from that now. Um, you know, three, four years ago, uh, we we didn't. Uh, but I have to tell you, you know, here's where I land with that. And, you know, I want to be very conscientious. And, and uh, first of all, if you are discriminatory against other people, please hang up now. I don't want you here in the first place. Just okay. say that. Um, I don't care what you're discriminatory about. If you hold that bone, hang up. I'm waiting for the number to drop because no one here should be discriminatory because we are notaries. Um, so with that said, with the age that we're living in now, I say leave them uncircled, don't line through them unless it's absolutely required. I've actually signed people who are transgender and didn't know what to do and call title and they're always very cool with it. Um, so you, you really just want to leave those uncircled now unless your state law says you have to actually do it. And then you can actually say, what do you identify as? I wouldn't assume, but I just leave them blank now and leave them as done and don't circle or line through them or any of those things. It's not your, it's not your place. They're formatted that way for reader usability. Um, I wouldn't line through them or circle over them now. And I think we've kind of evolved notary stars to kind of take that out of the training at, 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 the, at, at this moment as well. Yeah, I think it's still in your instructions, though, when you send out orders. So I've had a couple of questions confused about that. But listen, if you don't do it, it unlimited ink's not going to ding you for it. Even no, though it says it's in not. their instructions. But here's the deal. Um, we are obviously, times are changing, and we're evolving as sensitive humans. And we're seeing that missing from a lot of our certificates now. So we're seeing that less and less, that he, she, they, right? Um, because we just aren't smart, smart enough to know that we don't need to circle those. So they're just taking them out. But the problem is some lenders or attorneys or document preparers are putting a blank line in there 
where we actually have to choose something. We have to say he, we have to say she or they. So if you're stuck in that position, like Ronnie says, just ask them. I need to ask you how you identify for my certificate. And then use that. Let them tell you what they and, identify as. And in my instances of dealing with, uh, different, and so just so you guys ever know, I am gay and I live in a very gay community. And so there, the probability of me in, uh, signing someone who is transgender or gay or non-binary is pretty large because I have only ever lived in the center of the city where the gay people hang out because that's where I feel comfortable. Um, if you have to identify and you have to, and it doesn't match what is on the ID, just notate it in your journal. Don't make a big deal about it. Just say, listen, I'm notating this in my journal. I circle these pronouns. The person in front of me, you know, appeared this way. Just notate it in your journal. It's your private journal. It's only going to protect you later. But I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, you don't have to make a big deal out of out of anything because it's really not a big deal. How a person identifies, that's their life. You know, you're just notating the experience of their document. Uh, Ms. Beth, I want to move on to one question really quick because this one's going to be very quick. This is from Terry Golden. It says, do we have to hold on to copies of clients' IDs? No, please don't. Um, once you upload them to signing order, snap doc, zig sig, or have photocopied them and put them into the signing, get rid of them. They're, they're not to be on your computer. That is something that could come back if it could be traced to you to say that you were holding information that you shouldn't be holding. Once you've done your job, get rid of those IDs. All right, I think we've got four questions and two hands raised. I think we should call time on everything. Uh, we're okay. getting two hands raised here. Uh, Santa, when you are ready, or Santa, I don't know if it's Santa or Santa. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I had trouble getting on in the beginning, so I missed uh, the beginning part about what you were saying about the emails. Mm -hmm. But in the signingorder.com, I have the email that I've signed up with all the signing services and everything, but it does have an uh, alternate email. And I had filled that in when, when I first uh, signed up. Should I take off the alternate alternate, no, um, the email? alternative email should be fine. The master email should match your signingagent.com profile. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. No problem. We just have one Ron question left from last week, uh, Ronnie. And guys, if we didn't get to the rest of your uh, job form questions, um, we'll follow up with an email for you. But this one is from Bianca Scaff, and it's a Ron question. So that's a Ronnie Nipple question. Okay. Um, I'm setting up a Ron for tomorrow. That's water under the bridge. The signer isn't permitted to upload the document. It's a witness deposition, and they want me to acknowledge the signature on it. Is it safe for them to email it to me? Scratch that. We answered that. Um, that was um, that was Bill Bunfrey. He okay. actually answered that last week. So the second wrong question. Um, here's this is from David Merkatz. That was left over as well. <clears throat> he said, I had now, before we do this, Miss Beth, um, I'm gonna actually answer those and I wanna I just want to make this clear. If you guys have questions about unlimited ink signings, um, those really go to unlimited ink. It's not a notary stars question. Um, and I have no problem answering questions from time to time about unlimited ink, but I'm gonna answer those like on a personal email level, only because this is about the nationwide notaries that come together that may not be under the unlimited ink roof. So I really want to kind of just make sure that we don't, uh, if it's like unlimited ink order specific, it's not going to be helpful to the notaries that are here working with other signing agencies. Um, is that okay to say that, Ms. Beth? Well, this one isn't. It okay. does mention unlimited ink, but it's not an unlimited ink specific question. It really has to do with blue notary platform. Do you want to? Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, if, if it's Ron specific platform, it's got to go to the platform or to unlimited ink. My okay. agenda with this meeting is to make sure it appeals to all notaries, no matter who they're working with or what they're working with. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's see. One more. What do we have? 
I see one unlimited question, another, and then, oh, this is the one that I'd like to end it with. Um, the one from Lena, and I think she might be here tonight. Lena, yeah. Uh, so the question was, and this is something that I think will be beneficial to everybody uh, to end this on. It says, I've been approached for many debt settlement signings lately, and I'm interested in hearing your take on it, considering the mixed reviews. <laughs> This is not going to be very helpful, but it'll be helpful. I work with debt settlement companies at Unlimited. All of our run orders that are going out right now are debt settlement companies. Um, they are on the up and up. We interviewed them. We made sure if they're not willing to answer any questions or provide you any guidance on working with them, don't work with them. Signing agency or debt settlement company. But if they're willing to have a conversation on who is the client, can I look them up? Can I find them on the internet? Do they have a website? If you can do all of those things, then you have nothing to worry about. But if they're running some kind of shady, dark web information, no. Now, some of our debt settlements that go out, when we do the company, it's called FSG. When we do the company that we work with, they, you know, we have some signers that say, I don't remember doing this and all these things, but you have signers that do that with title and escrow as well. You know, you have signers that say, oh, I've changed my mind. I don't want to sell. I'm not ready to purchase. I'm not doing these things. But if the company won't have a conversation with you about who is the client, you know, how they're doing it. I mean, we provide you the exact script saying you're not working for FSG. You know, when they tell you to say that you're a representative of the, the debt settlement company, don't. Our script is actually written from the notary's perspective uh, at Unlimited Inc. We interviewed this company. We made sure that they were on the up and up. We made sure that they knew what our notaries would and would not do. And actually doing it on Ron is more safe for the notary because they're on camera. You know, they're on camera. They're answering questions. We give you a script that they have to answer to. You know, if your debt settlement company is not working with you in that capacity and saying you have to say you're a faux res representative absolutely not because you are not you know and i just had it up on my screen i actually bookmarked it and i'll just say let's see if i can find my bookmark um so this is from the unlimited ink script let's see if i can gotta open one that's from today let's see downloads almost there i'll read you exactly this is verbatim what we have to what we have our notaries read to our debt settlement clients and it says before we begin i must notify you that i am not an employee of the debt settlement company nor do i work with your credit advisor i am a third party notary who has been contracted to act as a third party witness to the signing of your documents my only real role here is to help you help verify your identity make sure you are coherent and willing to sign the document electronically I am not allowed in any way as a notary public to provide you any advice on our option, uh, advice or opinions on documents I can uh, that I am notarizing. If you're not, if you're being told to say something other than that, go the other way. That will be your guiding force right there because if they're act, act, asking you to act as a representative for the debt settlement company, do not do it. Our say. I am not an employee of this company. Like we give you a script and it says you must read this script. In fact, if we pull the, your video and you have not read this script, you will not be working with me again. Um, so, it, you know, we do this to protect you and myself because I'm going to tell you all something. I, I ain't the best looking guy in the, in the world, but I am too pretty to go to jail. So <laughs> I'm just not going. Um so, you know, if they're asking you to act in another capacity, just don't do it. All right, Miss Beth, I think we made it to the end. Is there anything that you needed to bring up or saw that you want to bring up before we go? I think we are pretty well done. Stick a fork in it, Ronnie. All right, guys. If you are not naked, I haven't got to say this in a whole week. If you are not naked or you're not stuffing your face with a sandwich right now, please turn on your camera so that we can give our signature wave. I haven't seen you guys in a whole, 
like this is like the second week like i'm back but it was a long time and i missed you guys so let's give our signature wave here wave to yourself wave to those notaries that weren't able to make it here tonight wave to the future notaries that are going to find this and miss beth how do we really say it here at notary stars Hey, everybody is trying to get somewhere, and this is all about how we get there together. So please just remember to reach back and grab the hand of another notary and take them with you on your journey. Thanks, everybody, for spending time with us tonight. Good night, everybody.